Probably you have heard people are making a lot of money passively from their blog nowadays. You have heard some of them are making $1,000 per month, some of them are making nearly $1 million per month from their blog. At least once in your life you have thought about making your own blog. Probably you have procrastinated because you have not found all the resources together. If that sounds familiar, then this tutorial is perfect for you. As I'm a web designer and professional blogger myself, I will show you how to make a money-making blog step by step practically. Everything in practical. How to create a blog from scratch without any prior experience. How to apply for Google AdSense and get approval. How to finally withdraw that money into your bank account. How to earn by doing affiliate marketing from your blog. Then where to find affiliate products that will pay you nearly $150 per sale. So only by selling 5 to 10 products from your blog you can earn extra $700 to $1500 per month. I will show you how to get massive traffic into your blog within the first few weeks. And most importantly, how to make your website GDPR compatible so your website would be 100% legal. Like I said, I will show you everything practically from scratch so no matter if you are a complete beginner into the blogging world or if you want to upgrade your existing blog, this tutorial is for you. Now before moving forward, if you don't want to lose this resource, please give this video a big like. Just have a look, if you like this video then from YouTube's left bar, you can go to liked videos and find this video easily later. Alright, now first have a look at what kind of blog you can create by following this tutorial. Number 1. General blog. You can create your personal blog, food blog, fashion blog, travel blog, fitness blog, DIY blog, photography blog, you can name it. Number 2. News or magazine website. Even if you want to create an advanced news or magazine site like New York Times, I will show you how to do that. Number 3. AdSense and Affiliate Blog. I will show you how to create a blog from where you can promote affiliate products and earn from Google AdSense at the same time. We will be creating our website in WordPress. WordPress is free and super easy to learn. And we will be using a page builder called Elementor. This is a free page builder and super fun to use. I'm showing you just a glimpse how we can create a complex layout within just 2 minutes by using Elementor. So right now we are inside Elementor page builder. Of course later I will show you everything in more details. But for now I just wanna show you a glimpse. So here if I wanna add a slider from left, I'm dragging this one. It says fancy featured slider. I'm dragging it to the right. Now if we want to change the layout of this slider, so from left open the layout and from here choose style, I'm selecting it to style 25. You see it's changed to this layout instantly. Now here underneath this on the left side, I only want to show some post from a specific category. So for that reason, from left I'm dragging this featured category widget to the right side here. Now from the left side, I'm selecting the category to nutrition. So now here all these blog posts are coming from the nutrition category. Also if we scroll down from here, you can specify how many blog posts you want to display here. So I'm selecting it to 5. And then from here heading title, I want to change the heading title to nutrition. You see it's instantly changed. Then on the right side, I want to add our sidebar. So from here, I'm just searching for sidebar. Now here this fancy sidebar, I'm dragging it to the right column. So here on the right, we can see the full sidebar. Let's now minimize the page and have a look. See, we have created this complex layout within two minutes. Not only that, I will show you everything from scratch. I will show you how to create this header, insert logos, and how to place ads into your header. How to create menu and mega menus like this. How to write a perfect blog post with title, categories, tags, featured images, reading times, and how to design your single blog post page. Also, how to customize your category page, search, and all archive pages. I will show you how to design the sidebar, adding different widgets to the sidebar. And for sure, how to create a custom homepage from scratch by using Elementor Page Builder. 
I will show you 5 things to generate revenue from your blog. First I will show you how to submit your blog to Google Search Console to let Google know your website is alive. Then how to connect your blog with Google Analytics that will let you know how many visitors you are getting, their all data, their demographics, interests, gender, age, everything. I will show you how to connect your blog with Google AdSense so you can earn consistent money every month. I will show you how to get high paying affiliate products and how to promote them from your blog. Also how to get regular traffic into your blog both from search engines and social media. I have splitted this video into 6 different parts. First I will show you how to get your domain name and web hosting. Domain is basically the name of your website like Facebook has Facebook.com, Amazon has Amazon.com, I have JimFahadDigital.com. You will have your own domain name. And web hosting is the storage of your website where all of your images, texts, blog posts will be stored. Then I will show you how to get the premium theme and create your blog. This theme has 6000 plus templates so no matter what type of blog you wanna create. You can do that within minutes. And I wanna tell you upfront it does carry a small fee, but trust me, it's worth it. Then how to write a perfect blog post and how to optimize it, and how to design the single blog post page professionally with tons of options. Then how to customize any part of your website, from your header, footer to any other pages like category, tax page, search page or any custom page. Then I will show you how to optimize your website. I will show you how to do SEO to rank your website on search engines. How to add analytics and console to track your visitors. How to add Google AdSense to make money from it. Finally, I will show you how to market your blog. How to get massive traffic into your blog. How to find affiliate product that pays really high commission. Then how to promote the product from your blog. And I will add a timestamp in the description so you can jump into any necessary part you need. So without further ado, let's now start with the step number one which is to get our domain name and web hosting. So first just click on the very first link in the description below this video or you can go to jimfahaddigital.com forward slash hosting. And this will take you to a special discounted Bluehost page. So why Bluehost? In my opinion, Bluehost is the best web hosting provider. I'm a web developer, I tried so many other web hosting companies, I don't want to mention their name, but I personally ended up using Bluehost. Hundreds of my clients using Bluehost and they never complain about using it. If you see my Bluehost account, I have hosted tons of websites here and I never get a downtime. Their customer support is really cooperative in case you need any help. And their price is really affordable. That's why I always recommend Bluehost. So now click on get started. Here you can see their different plans. The main difference between them with the basic plan you can host only one domain. You can take their plus or choice plus plan if you want to host unlimited domains. Also, you can take their pro plan if you have millions of visitors on your website already. I recommend starting with the basic plan. Then in future, you can upgrade that anytime. Now let's select the basic plan. Now we will select our domain name. If you already have a domain name that you want to use, you can just go ahead here on the right. But for now, I'm gonna get a new one. Now here let's try for something like apple.com and click next. It says the domain apple.com cannot be used on Bluehost, please try a different domain name. It should be because we cannot take that because we all know that's Apple's official website. So we will be typing our own domain name here and also if you click on the right side, you can see .site, .net, .info websites. I always recommend to take .com websites because it looks more professional and legit. So I'm gonna type here let's say our elementor.com as we are going to make our website through elementor page builder and now click on next. It says our elementor.com is available that's awesome. 
and here we need to put our account information i'm putting mine here really fast only to not make you bored okay here you can see the business name field if you don't have a business just keep it blank or put your full name but here is the most important thing that's your email address make sure you put your correct email address because after completing purchase a receipt will be sent to that email address so make sure you put your best email address here all right now scroll down here's the package information and it's automatically set to 36 months and this is gonna be your cheapest plan so yes you're paying for 36 months upfront but it comes out to only around three dollar 95 cents a month so this is 50 percent off that's gonna be your biggest discount now what i recommend is to just do 12 months if you don't want to commit to the 36 months or 24 months it's still 33% saving and it's only around $5.95 a month. And you also have your domain name for 12 months. So no more additional cost for your domain for these 12 months. And here you got package extras. First here is the option for domain privacy. Having domain privacy is good and I always recommend having domain privacy so no one gets to know who is the owner of the website. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm deselecting this one. Let's click on turn it off. Because I don't want to hide myself at this moment, I want to be transparent. So if anyone knows I own this website, I have no problem. You can keep this one checked if you want, not a big deal. I'm also deselecting all other options they are offering. We actually don't need that. They are just upselling their stuff. All right. Now you can see the price is now only $71.40 for the full year including the domain. That's awesome. And I'm legally obligated to tell you that this is my affiliate link. So I do get a little bit of commission off of this. But it does save you a ton of money. And it helps fund these free YouTube tutorials what I'm doing. So everybody wins. I really appreciate it. And here is the payment information. I'm putting my credit card number here, expiration date and CVV code. Then select this one here so that you are agreed to their terms and policy. Now click on submit. It says your purchase was a success. Also you can see here is your receipt. They will also send it to your email. I'm also waiting to get that email. Meantime, we can create our Bluehost account. So let's click on this create account button here. Here's the domain name that's automatically selected. Now let's create our password. Create a really strong password combining capital letters, numbers, special characters. You know how to make a strong password. And then retype the password in the second field. Now check this once again that you have agreed with their terms and policy. Now click on create account. I already have received an email to confirm my purchase. So I'm opening my email. You will also get an email like this. Then click here verify your email. It's very important. So it's now verified. Awesome. Now let's log in into our Bluehost account with the domain name and password we have just created. If you are logging in for the first time, you may see a pop-up like this. Like it says, let's create a website. Bluehost actually want to help you to make the website. Just click at the very bottom there. I'm not creating a website. Because I will be showing you everything step by step. And skip all of these pop-ups because we don't need any of that. Cool, we have successfully registered our domain name and web hosting. Congratulations! So far if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. I will try my best to help you personally. So now we can move on to step number 2 which is to install WordPress. And for some reason if you logged out, then log in again. Now from left menu bar click on my sites. 
then you can click here create site or here create a wordpress site i'm clicking here so let's now add a site name and site tagline we can change that anytime so i'm putting a site name jim fahad production and site tagline it deserved to be seen now let's click on advanced here you need to put your email address your username and password for your wordpress so i'm putting my email address here wordpress admin username i want to name it jim fahad and here let's put a password do you want to see my password i'm clicking here on show so it's abc123 i will of course show you how you can change it later so for now click on next close this browser pop-up now it says where we want to install our wordpress so make sure you keep this directory blank and here is your domain name selected and bluehost here is suggesting some free plugins but we don't need that let's deselect this all now click next awesome it says wordpress installed successfully now you can copy this information right here and save that somewhere on your computer where you can access it again later and click here to show your password actually i intentionally gave this an easy password that's abc123 never ever use this kind of easy password i'm showing you shortly how you can change that password we can now sign into wordpress by clicking here but this is not the usual way because all the time you cannot log in this way i mean from this page this button right so you should get used to signing into wordpress all the time is by going up to a new window and typing in your domain name forward slash wp dash admin so i'm typing here my domain name our element.com forward slash wp dash admin and click enter so we can see our wordpress login page here that means wordpress has installed successfully sometimes it takes 30 minutes to 24 hours to process this installation and this process is called propagation it basically has to let everyone know that hey this new domain name now exists and registered but we can see our website instantly they actually say it might take 30 minutes to 24 hours but i've been using bluehost for more than 10 years i always get domain live immediately actually that's another reason why i love bluehost so now you know that your domain name is working so go ahead and i'm um, just gonna type in my name which was the user that i created and i'm gonna type that easy password abc123 you can click this eye icon to show it now let's click on login so right now we are inside wordpress admin panel or wordpress dashboard i will make you familiar with all these options like you can see on this sidebar the dashboard posts media pages comments appearance plugin users i will make you familiar with all these options but before doing anything first i just want to clean up the whole wordpress dashboard because personally i love to work in a clean environment so to clean our wordpress dashboard first from these left menus let's scroll down and click on plugins to install the plugins because during wordpress installation there are some plugins came by default but i don't want them so first of all you can select all these plugins one by one like this or you can select all these plugins by clicking here and then from the top select the bulk actions first of all i want to deactivate them all so i'm selecting deactivate click on apply and then let's select all the plugin again from the bulk action this time click on delete and click on apply the browser pop-up says i'm sure or not yes i'm sure so click on ok now our all unnecessary plugin has been deleted by the way if you wonder what is a wordpress plugin wordpress plugin is basically extra add-on or extra app like thing that extends the functionality of your website now i wanna clean up my wordpress dashboard more so to do it from the left bar go to pages to all pages here we can see some pages that also came with a default wordpress installation so to delete it let's select them together from the bulk action click on move to trash and apply now let's do the same with posts so from left bar hover over on posts from there go to all posts this blog post is also a default blog post it came with default wordpress installation so i'm selecting it as it's just only one post so we can click here on trash it's deleted as well 
Now from left bar, if we click on dashboard, still here we can see some notifications. So let's close all of them. First, I'm clicking on this dismiss. Now let's minimize this one, this one, this one, all these, I'm minimizing them. Also, if you wanna make them more clearer, you can just open these screen options from top. Then you can just deselect one by one like this. So right now our dashboard is looking more cleaner. All right, now the next thing I wanna do, I wanna change that easy password. You may remember we have given a password A, B, C, one, two, three. So to change that password from left bar, hover over on users, from there just click on profile. Now from here, the first thing you can change the admin color scheme. This is the default color scheme, but if you want, you can change it to light. So your dashboard will look like this or this coffee one or this midnight one, but let's keep it the default one. Then if we scroll down from here, you can change your first name, last name, nickname. For example, here I'm giving my first name to Jim and the last name to Doe. Then I'm changing my nickname to Jim Doe. Then from here, this one is important. It says display name publicly as. So I'm setting it as Jim Doe. Basically, your this public name will be shown on the blog post as the author of that blog post. All right, then from under the contact information, you can put your email address, your website URL, and some information about yourself. Like here, within this biographical information, I'm just pasting some text here. Now let's scroll down. Here we can see the profile picture. This is basically your WordPress profile picture. I have a separate video on how to change your gravatar. Basically, if you go to jimfahaddigital.com, I will put this page's link in the description. So from that page under important links, here you see it says how to add gravatar. So it's just a three minute video. You can see it if you are curious about it. All right, let's now go back. Now here under account management, you can set your new password. So from here, click on set new password. Here WordPress is suggesting a strong password. If you want, you can keep that and you need to remember this password. So better you can write down on other place. I mean, on your computer or any notepad. But for now, I want to give it a different password. So from right, I'm clicking on hide so you cannot see my password. And here I'm typing my password. Though it says medium, but for the tutorial purpose, it's okay. Let's now scroll down and click on update profile. Now I also want to show you some basic settings. To do the settings from left hover over on settings, first let's go to general. From here you see it says site title and here is the tagline. For example, within the site title, here I'm writing JF Fitness. You can put your business name here or that represents your business more and within the tagline here I'm writing stay happy or stay healthy then stay happy. I'm writing all this title and tagline for the sake of writing the heading and tagline. I mean title and tagline but always try to put here the keywords that you want to rank on Google. So try to put some strong keyword within your site title and tagline not just fun words. Then within this address URL you don't need to change anything. Now let's scroll down here within the administration email address put your best email address. Now let's scroll down from the site language you can change it to your own language if you want. But remember, if you change the site language, it will be only applied on your dashboard. So all the menus you can see on the left, it will be translated to that language. Also all this information, I mean, everything will be translated within the dashboard. Then from here, you can change your time zone, your date format, all this information. So when you are done, click on this save changes. Then the next thing I want to change the permalinks because it's very, very important. So under settings, let's now click on permalinks. By default, it's set to plain. I don't know why WordPress does that always, but I love to keep it in postname because it's good for search engine optimization. Because if you put it on plain, then your website's URL or your pages URL would be look like your website name, then forward slash, then this type of bizarre weird number. 
that's not human readable also not good for search engine optimization that's why i always keep the permalink to postname it's more search engine optimized let's now scroll down and click on save changes all right so far we have done all the basic settings at this point i want to show you another basic thing that's how to log in and how to log out right now we are logged in if you want to log out then from the top right corner hover over on your name then click on log out and if you want to log in again make sure you have written down your website name at the url bar then after your domain name here our domain name is ourelementor.com forward slash write wp dash admin then hit enter and push your username and password here and log in and i want to make you familiar with another term that's the dashboard and the front end as we are the admin of this website that's why we are now inside dashboard but if you want to look how your website is looking on the real browser then all you need to do from the left top corner hover over on your site name here you can see it says visit site i'm opening it from a new tab so here on the right tab this is the front end of our website the whole world can see this page right now i know it looks super bland super boring we will make our beautiful website out of this also here at the top you can see a black bar you can only see this because you are the admin of this website when you are logged out you cannot see it i am telling all this beforehand because i will refer these two words very often during the tutorial this is the front end and the dashboard of the wordpress website all right let's now move to the next part that's downloading the theme and installing it so to get the theme you can just go to jimfahaddigital.com forward slash soledad it will take you to the theme forest soledad page and now before moving forward for the next three to five minutes i will be just sharing the greatest option of this soledad theme so i will discuss about all the great features and why i think it's one of the best theme for creating your blogs this theme has 6000 plus homepage templates and 222 plus demo websites so no matter if you want to create a fashion blog or fitness blog or news website or magazine website or any particular niche website that's already made for you all you need to do just import the demo website and replace the content with your own content by using this theme you can easily put your google adsense ads or other affiliate ads throughout the website you can put the ad on the header or the sidebar above the footer and in feed posts if you turn on the infinity scroll of this theme then all your blog posts will come one after another that means your visitors will stay longer period of time and you can show them more ads to make more money you can easily edit or add any part of your website you can change the style within seconds using theme customizer you can customize single blog post page category page search page or any archive page this theme has its own header builder so you can create a complex header very easily from here i know usually creating mega menus is not easy but using this theme you can make mega menus very very easily you can create your home page or any other custom page by using elementor page builder it's fully elementor supported even it has 40 plus elementor custom widgets so you can create any complex layout very easily here just by drag and drop let's talk about page speed let's be honest if you want to rank your blog website you should have a high page speed score and one of the greatest features of this theme is they are highly optimized for search engines like google you will get 90 plus page speed score on google at gt metrics and pingdom you will get performance grade a all right and like i said before if you want to get the soledad theme all you need to do you can just go to jimfahaddigital.com forward slash soledad i will put that link in the description if you go to that link that will take you to this page and here on the right you see it's only 59 dollar and it's worth each of the penny 
Now to get this theme, just click on add to cart and you know the usual purchasing process. You just need to pay them through your PayPal or your credit card. So just go ahead and get the theme. I will see you on the other side after purchasing the theme. Alright, so after purchasing the theme, you can see here on the right side, it says download. You can download the theme from here, but I recommend just go to the top right corner here on your theme forest account, hover over on your name and go to downloads. So here within your downloads, we can see Soledad theme. From here, click on this download. All right, now from here, we only need to download two files. One, it says installable workspace file only. And another one is this one, license certificate and purchase code, the text version. So I'm downloading this one. All right, it started downloading. Also, let's download this text file. Perfect, let's close this bar. So actually within your download folder, you can see these two files. One is text file and another one is zip file. So let's now go back to your WordPress dashboard. Now to install and activate the theme from the left menus, hover over on appearance, from there click on themes. Now from top click on add new and then click on upload theme. Then from here I'm clicking on choose file. Let's select the zip file that we have just downloaded and click on open then click on install now it might take three to five minutes or sometimes 10 minutes just wait for it don't refresh the page right now so it says a theme installed successfully let's now click on activate so now the theme has been activated successfully now before doing any other thing i just want to activate the theme so to activate it from this welcome page you can just go to this active theme tab or from under the Soledad tab from left, from there click on active theme. Here you scroll down, within this field you need to put your purchase code. And if you wonder where to get the purchase code, you may remember you have downloaded another text file. So go inside your download folder. From here open the text file. Then here under item purchase code, just copy this key from here. Go inside WordPress and paste your purchase code here. Let's now click on activate theme. And now if we go again under the theme license, we see here the license code is working perfectly. And it's really important to activate the license code because if you don't activate your license, you will not get all the functions. So it's really important. All right, now from under this Soledad tab, let's now click on getting started. So from here, let's scroll down and here it says install and activate plugins. Let's now click here on install plugins. By the way, no plugin of this list is required for your blog website. These are just extra add-on or apply thing. So basically, I mean, these are not mandatory, but if you wanna use them, you can use. Now let's scroll down and here we can see a bunch of plugins list. For now, I'm installing them all. And later, if you don't need any of these plugins, you can always uninstall and delete that plugin. But for the moment, I'm selecting all these recommended plugins from the bulk action. Let's click on install, then click on apply. All right, so all the required plugins has been installed and activated successfully. This time, if we just go to plugins from this left menu and click on install plugins. Okay, it's taking us to this page. So from the left, let's hover over on plugins and click again on installed plugins. Now here we can see all the installed plugins. And after completing your complete blog, you can delete any of these plugins if you think. Like here, in this website, we don't need Pinsy Portfolio or this Pinsy Recipe plugin. That's why we can delete them. So let's select this Pinsy Portfolio and Pinsy Recipe one. And here I'm also selecting Elementor 1. Of course we need Elementor, but for the moment I'm just showing you if you delete any plugin accidentally, how you can reinstall that later. So for the moment I'm selecting Elementor, Pinsy Portfolio, Pinsy Recipe. Let's now from top, from the bulk actions, click on deactivate first, click on apply. 
now again select elementor fancy portfolio fancy recipe this time from bulk action click on delete and apply browser pop up again asking i'm sure or not yes i'm sure so click on ok now the three plugin has been deleted but i want elementor page builder back because we need elementor page builder in different places to make our website better so you know i have deleted elementor for a purpose okay let's now have a look how to install elementor page builder again so to install it from plugins let's now click on add new this time from the wordpress plugins repository i'm here searching for elementor here you go this one elementor website builder click on install now now click on activate to activate this plugin you see here under our installed plugins we can see again the elementor page builder plugin all right now my goal is to create a complete blog and in terms of creating a blog of course you should have a niche so for this tutorial i wanna make a blog website for fitness so now to create our fitness blog first of all i wanna install a demo website so to get the demo website from the left bar hover over on appearance from there click on import demo data now from here let's scroll down and here we can see all the demo websites like i said i want to create a fitness blog but if you want to create any other blog like beauty blog or barbershop blog or any other blog like a book blog or a restaurant blog or business blog you can choose the demo importer from here also if we scroll up a bit here we can see a search option so like i said i want to create a fitness blog here i'm searching for fitness and here all these demo websites are related to fitness if you want to have a blog website like this one then you can import this one if you like this one you can select it but within this five layout i think this one would look great so before importing make sure you have selected these both options one says import demo style another one is import demo content now let's click here on import browser pop-up says i'm sure or not yes i'm sure so click on ok so this importing might take two to five minutes so i'm waiting and i'm coming back just after the importing whole demo website all right so it says import completed so our demo website has been imported successfully now do you remember during the cleaning up our wordpress website we have deleted all the demo posts and all the demo pages but right now i want to show you one thing if we now go to our pages from here let's go to all pages you see here we can see some new pages that came with the demo website also if we go to posts from here let's now go to all posts here we can see some demo blog post here that came with the demo website now from here from these blog posts first i want to show you one of the blog posts because i'm really excited to show you how it looks on the real browser so to show a blog post if we hover over on the blog post name here it says view i'm opening the blog post from a new tab so here on the other tab we can see the single blog post page here at the top we can see the global header i will show you later how to create this type of header with mega menus like this and then on the right side we can see the sidebar we'll also talk about the sidebar later let's now focus on the main blog post so here at the top we can see the breadcrumb here is the category here is the blog title and here it says written by jim doe so this is basically author name here is the publishing date then this is the thumbnail or the featured image and this is the real blog content and if we scroll down here we can see the comment numbers if we click on this love or heart it gives like on this post and here is the social media sharing options and here underneath we can see the author name it's jim doe here is the profile picture and here is the bio or the description about this author now here underneath this is the navigator for going to the previous and next post and then underneath this is the related posts 
we can see it within the beautiful carousel so we can just go to the next one to see more related blog posts now if we scroll down more here we can see all the comments the reply of the comments everything and then this is the global footer we will talk about them later like i said for now let's focus on the blog post so you know first of all we should learn how to write a perfect blog post so to write a blog post let's go inside wordpress dashboard now from the left links just hover over on posts from there you can click on add new or we can click here add new button so i'm clicking on add new so now we are inside the block editor let's close this pop-up and at this moment we can see it's full screen but i want to turn off the full screen mode so from the top right corner click on these vertical three dots and click on the full screen mode that will turn off the full screen mode because to me it's more comfy we can see all the menus from left and we can see all the writing area here okay so let's now start from the title this would be our blog title so let's first type a title here i want to write top 10 or 10 tips for successful weight loss and here within this block you will be writing the whole blog post for the moment i'm minimizing all other distracting options so let's minimize this option also let's minimize this one so let's now just focus on this block area okay so it's super simple it's something like google doc let's say if you want to write anything you can just simply write here i'm writing here this is some text it's simple like this and then if you want to make a line break just hit enter and here let's say i want to create a heading widget so to create a heading first of all i'm writing here this is a heading then you can just select it and click on this icon from here select it as heading now from here you can choose what option you'd like to have i mean you can select it as h2 or h3 or h4 i'm keeping it as h3 now underneath this heading i wanna create a bullet point list or a numbered list so to do it here i'm just typing one then put a period and hit enter you see it's automatically started making list so here i'm just typing item one hit enter it is now item two oops not in time it's item two then if you just hit enter two more times together then you can start writing regular text here all right now let's say if you wanna link some text to the external website or any other inner page is of your website then here i'm just writing this is a link so if you wanna link this link word just select the link word then from top click on this link icon and here i'm just typing my website url that's jimfahaddigital.com then press on this return icon so it's now directly linked to my website all right so far so good now i also want to show you what if you want to add any image within your blog post so just put your cursor here on the right side we can see a plus icon let's click on this plus icon from here you can choose any of these options so like i said i want to add an image so click on the image from here if you want you can upload any image from your computer or you can just click on the media library so these are the images you already have uploaded on your wordpress website for example let's just select this image and click on select so here we can see the full image let's say if you wanna make the image smaller then on the right side you can see a circle just click over that and drag it to the left you see it's becoming smaller now if you wanna align the image you can align that by clicking on this icon you can make it right aligned or you can make it centered aligned like this it's super easy all right so for now let's hit enter and you know what i just wanna remove all this dummy text from here now within the block field i'm pasting a real blog post so here we can see the real 10 steps to lose weight 
but to give it a real blog vibe i just wanna add an image so if you wanna add any image inside of a written blog then you can just hover over on any place and you see this plus icon appears so i'm clicking on this add block here you know i wanna add an image let's click on media library by the way if you wanna upload images from your desktop then you can just click on upload files then click on select files and upload that from your computer but for now i'm going to the media library and i'm selecting this image click on select and yep this image looks great but i just want to make it a bit smaller like this and from here i'm making its alignment to centered okay so we're done with the blog writing now i wanna make other changes so from the right side make sure you have selected the post option not this block option so you have selected the post option let's now scroll down from here first of all open the categories as we have imported a demo website that's why we can see here some pre-made category names so for the moment let's select a category from here i'm selecting weight loss category and i also want to show you how you can create a category i mean how you can create a new category to add a new category click on add new category only to look like it a custom category so i'm naming it gym cat then if you want to make it as a main category you can just keep it like this but let's say if you want it to be as a subcategory of a main category then you can select the parent category from here but i wanna just keep it as a regular category so i'm not selecting the parent category all right let's now click on add new category so you see the both weight loss and gym cat category has been selected you can select multiple categories within a single blog post all right let's now scroll down now open the option tags now here under the text field you see the most used tags on your website so if you want you can select the tags from here just click over that like i'm selecting fitness then i'm selecting gym also you can just type so here i'm typing gym tag then to separate each text you can just put comma so here i'm putting comma also let's add another tag that's weight loss and put comma perfect let's now scroll down and open the featured image this one is super important the featured image is basically the thumbnail of your blog post you can see it on all archive pages and single blog post page so let's select the featured image from here for this blog post let's select this one click on set featured image we can see it here let's now scroll down by the way if you don't like this you can always click on replace image and replace it with another image all right let's now scroll down and here if you want you can put some fake views of your blog post so for now here i'm writing 1443 you know it will give your website some social proof so others reader will get interest to read this whole blog all right let's now scroll down here's the options for post format data in 90 percent cases we will be using this standard because this is the most common type but let's say if you wanna focus on videos on a blog post or if you wanna focus on a audio on that case you can select the video or audio category because by depending on this format later you can create custom display functionalities but like i said in 99 percent cases we use standard format so let's keep it in standard all right now if we scroll down from the main blog post let's scroll down at the very bottom here under the main blog post there are two more options number one is options for this post and another one is add a review for this post i'm talking about these two options a bit later for the moment let's just publish this blog post so to publish it from the top right corner click on publish and click on publish one more time so here it says post published if we now want to see the post here click on this view post i'm opening it from a new tab so here we go we can see our single blog post page here correctly so let's now start from the top at the top we can see the bread cramp here is the two categories one is gym cat 
and another one is weight loss here we can see the blog title here you can see the blog author name here is the publishing date and this image is the main featured image underneath the featured image we can see the real blog post here you see we have added an image so here it is let's now scroll down we can see the whole blog post here and underneath the blog here we can also see two categories oops these two are not categories these are tags the fitness and the gym tag then underneath here is the social sharing options and here is the details about the author so far everything is looking perfect all right let's now go back inside wordpress dashboard because like i said i wanna show you some more options so within these two options first of all i wanna show the options for this posts or page as this is a post so of course these options are for this post so let's now open this option and scroll down so here first of all let me clarify about two things that's the difference between global change and single post change so here all these options here you can see if we change any of these settings that will be applied only on this specific blog post and if we change any settings from the global theme customizer i will talk about that a bit later so if we change any settings from the global theme customizer that will be applied on all blog posts so let's say if you want to change anything only for this specific blog post you can do the changes from this place for example here the first option is for hiding featured image so from here you see by default it's getting the style from the global theme customizer but instead if i set it to no show featured image and click on the top right corner update now go to the blog view page if we now refresh the page we can still see the featured image because from the dashboard here we have selected show featured image but if we select yes hide featured image let's now update it go to the front end and refresh the page see we no longer see the featured image here on the single blog post page all right let's now go back to the wordpress dashboard but i want to just make it to the default and here for this specific blog post if you wanna put a reading time you can do that so your readers would get an estimate how long it would take to read the whole blog post here i'm just writing four minutes let's now click on update if we now refresh the front end here right after the title it says four minutes read all right let's go back so here this option is for sidebar layout for this specific post so only on this blog post if you don't want the sidebar you can disable that by selecting no sidebar option then let's scroll down i want to show you some other options like it says single style for this post so by default this is the default style for all the blog post but from here only for this blog post if i select another option like here i'm selecting style 5 let's now click on update go to the front end and refresh the page so here this single blog post page has got a different layout but remember this style has been applied only on this blog post other blog post design will remain same all right let's now go back here instead of style 5 i'm making it default style and all other option i'm keeping all them default because i will show you later how to change them all from global theme customizer all right for the moment let's now minimize this option so here i'm minimizing it and i want to show you how to write a review inside of a blog post so here let's now expand this option it says add a review for these posts so let's open it and here i will show you how to write a perfect review for a product or for a book or for any goods all right before writing the review i just wanna give you an idea if we go to the real blog post page okay let's now refresh the page because we have changed the style 
So here, as our website is a fitness blog website, here we write all the blog posts about fitness, healthy eating, weight loss. So of course, we can promote some fitness related product here, or we can review some product that's related to fitness and health. So let's now have a look how to write a review inside a blog post. My goal is to embed that review within the blog post like here after this three number or let's say after this image here before this point six it mindfully I want to embed a review for a product that's related to this blog post. So let's now go back to WordPress dashboard and make sure you have opened this add a review for this post. For example, here I want to write a review for a sports shoe. So here I'm writing the sports shoe name like here is the shoe model and here running shoes review. Then here we don't need to write the address phone or website. I just want to write the product price that's $169. Then here inside the link for buy here you can post your affiliate link in this way you can earn affiliate commissions from your blog website. So here I'm pasting my affiliate link. Then here you should write the text that you want to appear on the button. So I wanted to say get it now. Now scroll down from here you can upload the image of that product. So I'm clicking on select. Let's now upload this image from my computer. So I'm selecting upload files. Click on select files from images folder. I'm selecting this shoes image. Click on open. Click on insert into widget. Now here if you want you can specify the image size and then here's the option for reviewed item schema. So from here if you want you can select the product type. For example here I'm selecting product. Now here within this field you can put all the product description like the product name, the product price. Actually this schema works for search engines. For example it would give Google more information about your product and it will help you to rank on that specific product. So you know better about your product so just go ahead and fill out all this information with your product information but for the moment I'm making it to none because it's optional but of course it's good for search engine optimization. Now here inside description put some good word about the product and here I'm pasting some description text and here these points okay these points are basically the rating of that product on a term like on design how many point you want to give them on design how many point you want to give them out of 10 so here point one i'm making the point one name is design and out of 10 i want to give this product 10 rating the second one the second point i'm making it comfy so on comfy i'm giving it eight out of ten then the third point here i'm writing price in terms of price i'm giving it eight out of ten and then the four point here i'm writing quality so in terms of quality i'm giving it ten out of ten because of course you want to promote the product you think that's quality is 10 out of 10. Let's now scroll down here you can write some good fact about the product and here within this field you can write some bad thing about that product. So here within the good field here first I want to write modern design and then if you want to write more good things just hit enter and write another good thing so here I'm writing very comfy so just write as many as good things you know about that product and make sure you have separated them by entering so they are all in a separated line and here write some bad things about the product because your audience want to trust on you okay so for example if these shoes are a bit heavy so here I'm writing a bit heavy and here I'm writing overpriced. Actually, you shouldn't write overpriced here, but you know what I mean. So we have written the complete review about these shoes. So to save our work, click on this update button. If we now go to the front end of the blog post and refresh the page. Now have a look. We have written the review of the product, but we cannot 
see the review anywhere within this page. Why is that? Because if we now go back to the dashboard, you see we have written the whole review, but we have not used this short code within the post. So to do it, you see here it's highlighted. It says fancy review. This is basically the short code. So I'm copying this short code from here. Let's scroll up. Now where you want to insert that short code, just paste that on that place. So here, like I said, after this seven point here, I'm hitting enter. I'm hitting enter a couple more time to make some space. Now at the middle of the space, I'm pasting the short code. All right, so this is the short code. Let's now click on the update button to save. This time, if we go to the front end and refresh the blog post. Now have a look if we scroll down after the seventh point here, we can see the whole review. So I hope you get it how it's looking on the front end here. We can see the product image. This is the product name here. We can see the price and this is the button. It says get it now. Now, whenever anyone clicks on this button, that will take you to your affiliate link. And here is the product description. Here is all the ratings you have given in terms of design, comfy, price, quality. There are more fields. So if you want, you can add them all. And here is the good things about the product. And here is the bad things about the product. And overall, by calculating all these, it gives it a 9 out of 10 rating. So in this way, you can write great reviews about any product you'd love to promote. All right. We will talk more about the single blog post later, but right now I want to show you another thing. I want to show you now how to add editor or admin to your blog. Because if you are not a writer, you may not want to write all the blog posts by yourself. You may want to hire some writers to write blogs on your website. So on that case, you can create some writer's account on this blog website so they can write the blogs by themselves but they won't have all the controls over the website they can only write the blog edit the blog and publish the blog so to create that editor or admin account let's go to wordpress dashboard now from the left if we hover over on user from there first let's go to all users here we can see one existing users that's jim doe actually that's me that's the administration now for example i wanna here add another writer as an editor of this blog so to add him let's now click on add new so here for him i'm creating a username so it would be my writer jim fahad here i'm writing his email address let's say his name is jim fahad so here i'm putting first name jim the last name to fahad if you want, you can put his website's URL here. And now I also want to create a password for him. So let's hide it. And here I'm creating the password. For now, let's click on confirm use of weak password. And here, this one is important. That's the role. So here, if we open the drop down, here you see there are a few more options like author, editor, contributor, subscriber, and administrator. Remember, as you are the main owner of the website, so you are administrator of this website. If you give the administrator power to other people, they can do the exact thing what you can do right now. So if you don't trust anyone so much, don't make anyone administrator. I prefer to make your writers on author or editor role. But as I know Jim Fahad very well, I trust him. That's why I'm making him administrator. And let's now click on add new user. All right, let's close it. So here you see we have now two users. One is Jim Doe and another one is Jim Fahad. If we now go to all posts, so from left over over on posts, go to all posts. Here you see we can see here all the blog post title. Here is the blog post author. Now, only to give you example, let's see, this post has written by Jim Fahad, not Jim Doe. So if you want to make the change right now, you can do that very easily. Just click here on quick edit. Now here author instead of Jim Doe, I want to make it Jim Fahad. Now from right click on update. 
You see, we have instantly changed the author name from Jim Doe to Jim Fahad. So if we now view the page from the new tab, here we can also see it's written by Jim Fahad. Cool. All right, now I want to show you how to customize single blog post page layout from theme customizer. So you will have more control over everything. Okay, so you already familiar with the blog details like here if we click on all posts right now we are on the blog posts. We can see all the blog title here. Here is the author name. Here is the categories and you know one blog post may have different categories. I mean one or multiple categories then here is the tags and on the very right side this is the publishing date. Okay, and if we have a look on a single blog post page view at this moment it's looking like it. But I want the full control of the single blog post page. So to have the full control of the page we need to go to the theme customizer. And we can go to theme customizer in two different ways. First we can go to the customizer from WordPress dashboard. So from the WordPress dashboard if we hover over on appearance from there we can just click on customize or also from the front end you know we can always see this black bar at the top so from this black bar here you can see customize we can click there so i'm clicking here on customize so right now we are inside the theme customizer here on the left we can see all the customizing options and on the right side we can see our website now at the very top we can see the top bar the main header we will talk about this header later i will show you everything how to create this type of header from scratch also i'm showing you very shortly how to customize this sidebar very easily but for the moment let's now focus on the main blog post so you know this is a single blog post page so if I want to control, I want to show the author name or not, I want to hide the publishing day or not, all this type of tiny control, I can do that from inside this theme customizer. And remember, whenever we are changing anything from inside this theme customizer, that change will be applicable globally. That means whenever we are changing anything from this theme customizer, that changes will be applied for all blog post page. All right, now to customize this single blog post page from left, let's find here. I'm searching for single posts. Here we go. Let's click on single posts. From there, first I'm clicking on general. Now have a look. You have almost control each of the part separately from here. Actually, all of them are self-explanatory. So I, of course, won't describe all of this. I'm just showing you some example. So let's start from the top. Okay, so here the first interesting thing, you can change the layout or the style of the blog post page. You can do that from here. It's a single post template. By default, it's set to style 1. But if you want, you can set it to, for example, style 5. You see now it has got a different layout and remember this change has been applied to all the blog post page because like I said these settings are global but I want to go back to style 1. Then here we can see the post title post categories all above the featured image but if you want to reverse that you can just enable this option. Now you see featured image at the top and other metadata at the bottom. But I want to go back to the previous settings. Then if you don't want this sidebar on the right side of each single blog post page, you can disable that from here. So instead of right sidebar, you can just make no sidebar. But I want this sidebar on the right side. So similar like this, let's scroll down from left. You can also specify the width, the sidebar width. You can control almost everything. Like I said, all these are self-explanatory, so I'm just showing you examples. Like here is the option for height category, so we can see the categories here. If we just turn it on height category, we can no longer see the categories. If we turn on the height featured image on top, we can no longer see the featured image. But I want the featured image to be visible, also I want the categories. 
So similar like this, you can turn on and turn off each of the part. Like here we can see the author and date. So if you don't want them, you can disable everything from here. All right, let's now scroll down because here I want to show you more interesting things. Let's now scroll down to the very bottom of the blog post. I mean blog post. So here we can see the blog author. You can also turn off the blog author section. Now, if we scroll down more from the left side, you can turn on and turn off all of these single options from here. Then if we scroll down from left, you see all of these are self-explanatory. For example, if you don't want this author box to be shown, you can just hide the author box from here. Now here is no author box, but I want it to be back. Let's now scroll down. Here is more options available. As this is our very last post, that's why we can see only the previous post navigation. But if you have more posts on that case, you can see also the next post navigation on the right side. Also, with this, if you want, you can enable the thumbnail with that to enable it because personally I like that very much. So from here, show post thumbnail on next or previous post navigation. I'm turning it on. So with this previous navigation, we can see a tiny thumbnail or featured image here. All right, let's now scroll down. And here you see custom sidebar for single post. Right now on the right side is the main sidebar, but instead of the main sidebar, if you want to use any other sidebar, you can select that from this drop down list. So like I said, actually you can control each part of your single blog post page from the theme customizer. And here is the option for putting your ads because if you're familiar with Google ads, Google sometimes provides you HTML codes. You need to put those HTML codes inside of your website. These are the place. Actually, I will talk about all the ads, all the Google ads at the very last section of this tutorial. So for the moment, let's just skip this ad section. Okay, let's just move to the very top. Now I want to show you more options for the single blog post page. So from top, let's just go back and open the inline related posts. Though I'm not a big fan of inline blog posts, I mean inline related posts. I'm just showing you an example. So if we click here, this is another great thing about Soledad theme. You can find any examples image within their type. You can find any example within their customizer. So to see it, if we just click on this image, here we can see what represents inline related posts. But like I said, I'm not a big fan of this type of inline posts. But still, if you want it, then from these settings, you can just turn it on from here. But I don't want that. That's why I'm going back. But yep, I'm a big fan of related posts. So let's open the related posts. Basically related posts are, if we scroll down this page, here you see there are some posts within this carousel. It says you may also like. These are the related posts. And you can determine the condition from here. Like it says display related posts by categories. So here if we go to the very top of the single blog post page, you see this blog post is under gym cat and weight loss category. So underneath the single blog post, here we can see other related blog post that under weight loss category. I hope it make clear sense. And here is more other customization option. Like if you want to see this publishing date or not, you can control them from here. Also, if you scroll down here, you'll find more options. For example, this carousel is auto rotating it's not auto rotating i mean it's on auto play so if you want to turn on the auto play option you can turn it on from here but i don't want that i'm just showing you the options also you see here it says amount of related posts 10 so if we just navigate through these arrows we can see 10 related posts now instead of 10 if you want you can only set six related posts now here only six related blog posts will be looped. All right, let's now scroll up and go back. And now I'm opening the comment form. At the bottom of each single blog post page, here is an option for leaving comment. But if you don't want that, you can disable that from here. So just click on hide comments and comment form. 
Now you see there is no commenting option, so no one can comment on your blog posts. But of course I want that option, that's why I'm turning it off. Alright, let's now go back and open the infinity scrolling load posts. Alright, this is one of the options I see so many bloggers have been using. And why not? Actually, it helps to make more money. Because if we turn on the enable infinity scrolling load posts, let's turn it on so you'd understand it properly. Now have a look. This is our single blog post and if we now start scrolling down, you see after this blog post here, another blog post is coming. Then if we scroll down, the next blog post is coming after that. So here the loop is infinity. In this way, you can stay your visitor so more long time. Also, if you want, you can place in between Google Ads and there is, I believe, a place for that on the left if you scroll down, yep. You can put more Google Ads in between the posts because it's infinite. In this way, if you want, you can make more monies. But at this point, I don't want this option. So from left here, I'm turning off. So on the one single blog post page, we can only see one blog post. And here with the single blog post page, one last thing, if you like to have this breadcrumb at the top of the each single blog post, then you can keep it. But if you don't want to have this breadcrumb, you can disable it. So to disable it, let's now go back, go back one more time. Now go inside general, then go inside general settings. From there, let's now scroll down, scroll down more. Okay, here I'm searching for disabling the breadcrumb. Yep, here you go. It says disable breadcrumb. Let's turn it on. Now we can no longer see the breadcrumb at the top of each page. All right, let's now go back. Go back one more time. Now I wanna show you how to customize the sidebar. So at this point, this is our sidebar here at the top, we can see the search bar. But actually on the sidebar, I don't want this search bar because here within our header, we already have a search option. So probably I will delete this search bar from right side. Also, I don't want this recent posts, recent comments on the sidebar. Then of course, we can keep the social handles or social media links here. And I will also show you how to put add links here then yep we can put here our facebook page url so people can like our facebook page from inside of our website or our blog and then at the right bottom yep we can see some popular posts we can keep that as well all right so to customize our sidebar we need to go to the widgets to go to widgets from left let's scroll down go inside widgets and then go inside main sidebar and this sidebar is created using block widgets so click on got it and this one is basically this search bar like i said i don't want it that's why i want to delete it just click over this place then from top right corner click on this vertical three dots then click on remove search also i don't want this recent post section on the sidebar Again, just click inside of this widget, click on these three dots, click on remove group. Now from the right side, that part has gone. Also, I don't want these recent comments on the sidebar. That's why let's delete it from here. Just click over it. Then from these three dots, click on remove latest comments. Also, let's delete this heading. So from here, let's remove the heading. Then we can keep the social handles here. So just click over it. But instead of our networks, I want it to say social handles. And here, let's say if you don't have Tumblr, then you can disable that from here. If we just scroll down, you see all the social media names are here. At least all the most popular social medias are here. Now, only to give you example, let's say if you don't have Tumblr, so just disable it. And for example, if you have Flickr, just turn the show Flickr option on. In this way, you can enable or disable the social medias from this right sidebar. And if you wonder how to change the social media links, I'll show you that a bit later because we need to control all the social media links from a single place. 
because we may have social medias on our header on the sidebar on the footer as well so if we change the link from a single place that will be changed everywhere you get the point right i will show you how to change the social media links very shortly all right so let's keep the social handles and let's now scroll down to the next widget here we can see this one is an image widget just click over it because first of all i wanna remove this widget actually instead of widget we can say it block i don't want this block just click on these vertical dots and click on remove legacy widget so basically it's also a widget we can call it widget no problem so here in between these social handles and this facebook widget i wanna insert another widget so have a look if you wanna insert anything in between these two widgets just hover over on it you can see this plus icon now click on this plus icon so first of all i wanna insert a heading and if you put this heading that won't get this greenish border design so if you want that from here you should search for soledad basically i was searching for this one soledad block heading let's select it and within this heading i wanna say here recommended you see here this recommended heading gets the similar style like other headings all right now underneath this heading widget i'm just putting my cursor and click on this plus icon here actually i want to insert an image so click on this image click on upload and here i want to insert this image now click on open so here on the right side we can see this banner image basically this is the croco block it's a digital product and i'm an affiliate of this product i want to promote this product from the sidebar so if we keep it like as a static image you know it won't work so we should link it with our affiliate link so to link this image from left side just click on this image and at the top click on this insert link icon and paste your affiliate link here then click on this apply icon see how easily you can insert your affiliate link on the image all right now underneath this image here the facebook widget looks great but here instead of this unknown facebook page i wanna put my facebook page url so just click over it and here instead of this i'm typing my facebook page url that facebook.com jim dot consultancy and here you go i can see my page here and the cool thing about is we can scroll through the page from inside our blog that's really cool and then underneath the facebook widget let's now scroll down yep actually i like this widget just click over it here you can display some popular posts from a specific category so here it says popular in yoga so instead of yoga if you want to display some popular posts from under any other category like if you want to show here some fitness tips or your popular gym posts or your popular nutrition posts you can display them as uh, we have written here popular in yoga that's why i'm selecting the yoga category from here so here it says include categories i want to just select the yoga so i'm selecting yoga now here on the right side we can see all the popular posts that's under yoga category and also you can limit how many posts do you want to display so you can control that from here it says number of posts to show by default it's five but let's say if you want to only display three you can set it to three now here on the right side we can see the most three popular posts that's under yoga category but instead of three let's put here five again so we are done with this widget as well and then underneath this widget if you want to insert any other widget you can do that from here just click on this plus icon and select any widget from here but so far the sidebar looks great to me i don't want to add any more widgets from left i'm very happy with the sidebar so from the very top click on this publish button to save our work all right let's now go back go back one more time now here i want to show you another thing you see here this is our single blog post page and now i also want to show you how you can customize the archive pages or category pages 
Like here at the top, we can see the categories that's weight loss and gym cat. So if we click on this weight loss category, it takes us to the category page or it says archive page. So if you also want to control this category pages layout, you can do that from here. So just go inside general from there. If we click on this, it says category tags search archive pages. So this design would be applied on your category pages, text pages, search pages and any other custom archive pages. So let's now go inside of it. So on your archive pages, if you want to display these posts in a different layout, you can select the layout from here. So instead of this list posts, you can select any other option like here I'm selecting grid two columns posts. You see the layout has been changed. But instead of that, we can go back to the previous one. That's the list posts. And like I said, you can basically control each corner of this page from this customizer, even the gap between the featured posts, height for the featured styles, height for the featured styles on tablet, you can control everything from here. Let's say on the archive pages or category pages, if you don't want to show the categories here, or if you want to hide the post date, you can enable or disable all these options from here. Even if you want to add Google AdSense or any other ads HTML code, you can put the code snippet here. But like I said, I will describe about all the ads at the last part of this tutorial. So far, everything is looking great. Here we can see our archive page is looking great. The sidebar, we have made the design looking very clean. Also, if we go back to single blog post page, it also looks super clean. So when you are happy with your work, don't forget to click on this publish button to save your work. Then click on this X to exit from the theme customizer. Let's now move to the next part of the tutorial. Now I want to show you how to create a custom home page using Elementor page builder. So let's now go to our WordPress dashboard. And from the dashboard, first I want to create a page. So to create a page from pages to click on add new. I'm naming this page awesome home page. For now, I don't want to change anything from here. Just click on publish and publish one more time. Okay, so before creating the home page, first I want to do a simple setting. I want to set this page as the home page of our website. So to do it from left, let's now hover over on settings from there go to reading. Then it says your home page displays. I'm selecting a static page and the home page. I'm selecting this one awesome home page that we have just created. Now I scroll down and click on save changes. All right, let's go back to pages to all pages. This is our awesome home page. You see it says front page. Now here click on edit. And here before changing anything, I just want to show you another thing. If we now hover over on our site name and I'm opening the visit site from a new tab. Here we can at least understand the awesome home page page has been set as the home page of our website. Awesome. Okay, so go back to WordPress dashboard first from here. I want to make some general settings. So scroll down from here. It says a display page title. I'm turning it off. So click on no. Also here at the front end, we can see the share icons. I also don't need them. So from here, I'm making it no. Now, if we just click on update and go to the front end, let's now refresh the page. You see, we can no longer see the page title nor the social share icons. All right, let's now go back. I want to design our beautiful home page by using Elementor page builder. So from top click on edit with Elementor. So right now we are inside Elementor page builder here at the top. We can see the global header and at the bottom we can see the global footer. Now my goal is to make the home page in between this header and footer. So first let me familiar you with the Elementor page builder. It's pretty easy. On the left all you can see all these are widgets or elements and on the right side this is our canvas. All you need to do we will be just dragging these elements from left to the right canvas. And basically all the widgets here you can see these are provided by the solid theme but for the moment if I minimize it 
Here we can see all the regular widgets that's provided by Elementor itself. So here to only give you an example how it works, I'm just dragging this heading widget to the right canvas here. And let's say here I wanted to say this is my awesome blog. Now just have a look how easy it is to change anything by using Elementor Page Builder. So I have written the title here. Now if we want to make the alignment centered, we can do it from here. Also, if you want to change the HTML tag, you can make it H3 or H4 like this. But let's keep it as H2. Now if you want to do any style with this heading widget, just go under its style tab. From here you can change its color to any other color. Also, like here, I can make its color to red. Then we can work with its typography from here. If you wanna make the font size bigger, just drag this bar to the right side like this. Then also, if you want, you can change the weight to very bold. You can also work with its transform to all uppercase. Let's set the style to italic like this. So there are a lot of options you can style. Okay. Now underneath this heading widget, if you want to put any other widget, just click on this Rubik's Cube icon here. Then for example, let's say I'm dragging this button widget underneath this heading here. First, I want to make the alignment to center. So I'm doing it from here. Now the link, for example, I want to link it with my own website. That's jimfahaddigital.com. So I'm putting the link here. Then if you want, you can change the text from here. So instead of click here, if you write here, read more, you see it's instantly changed. Now, similar like this heading widget, if you wanna do some styling with this button, just go under this button widgets style tab here. Now from here, let's say I just wanna change the background color of this button. So I can do that from here. I'm making the background color to black color. And also if you wanna change the text color, you can change the text color from this color picker for example i'm making it red or let's make it white and now let's say if you want to add some space in between this heading widget and the button widget so to do it let's make sure you have selected this button go under its advanced tab as i want to add some space in between these two so of course we need to add the space at the top of this widget so to do it here we can see it's the margin First of all, unlink the margin. I want to add some space at the top. So here's the top field. I'm adding, for example, 100 pixel of margin. So I hope you get the idea whenever you are working with any widget on its content tab, you can change the main content from under the style tab. You can change all the design related stuff like their colors, their typography, their font size, all these. And from under the advanced tab, you can control the spaces around it. All right. So these were just example. I don't need this heading nor this button. So to delete it, just click on this X icon. Now here, instead of using these basic widgets, I want to use the solid add widgets. So from top, open the fancy design elements. I'm opening it at the top of our page. I want to use a slider. So from here, it says fancy featured slider. I'm dragging this to the right canvas here. Now you can customize it depending on posts or the pages or landing pages. But of course, I want to set the query in posts. And then within this query field, you can see there are a lot of options. Like if you want to display here all the posts from a specific category, you can specify the category from here. For example, if I select here nutrition category, all the blog posts will be appeared here. That's under the nutrition category like that. Also, you can include any particular tag and not only including any particular tags or categories. If you want, you can exclude any category or tag. And you know what? I don't want to show here all the posts from nutrition category. That's why I'm just removing nutrition category from here because I want to display here all the blog posts from all the categories. But from here, let's now scroll down. By the way, you can control posts per page from here. So instead of six, I'm selecting here 12. So 12 recent posts will be shown here. And here it says order by instead of publishing date. If you want, you see there are more options. So actually, as this is the front banner of our website here, I want to display all the posts that are most popular. So to select that from here, I'm selecting most viewed posts all time. So these are the 
most viewed posts of our blog. And here the order is set to descending by default. So of course the latest post will show at the top. All right, let's now scroll down and open the layout. From here, you can play with all these styles because if we choose the style, you see there are tons of options here. For example, if I set the option number 37 or style 37, you see it's a different layout. And if we just click on this right arrow, we can navigate through them. But instead of style 13, let's not 13, instead of style 37, I want to select another one. So from here, let's select style 25. It looks pretty decent. I really like it. So if we just click on this right arrow, we can see the next posts within the same layout. It looks really cool. But you know what? Personally, I'm not a big fan of auto carousel. So I just want to disable the auto option. For that reason, let's just minimize the layout and open the slider options. From here, I'm just turning off the auto play. All right, now underneath this carousel here, I want to display some posts from a particular category. So for that reason, let's click on this Rubik's Cube icon. Now from left here, you see it says Pincy Featured Category. Let's now drag this widget to the canvas here. And here, I just want to display the blog posts that's from the running category. So from here, include category, let's select running. Now we can see only the blog posts that's under running category. Now let's scroll down from here posts per page instead of six, let's set it to five. And then let's scroll down, open the heading title. In the heading title, I just want to write the category name. So it would be running. So it's showing nicely. But here, if you have a look, there is no space in between this area and the top slider area. So to add the space, let's select the top area. You can always select any area just by clicking on these six dots. Let's now go under its advanced tab, unbind the margin. As we want to add some space in between these two, that's why I'm adding 60 pixel of margin at the bottom of this carousel. So right now we can see the space. Now it looks more organized. Okay, so now with this area, I want to do a little bit trick. So the first thing I just want to duplicate the column. So which one is the column here? If you have a look, this icon, this is basically the column. Now right click over this icon and click on duplicate. And you can always adjust the width of the columns just by putting your cursor at the middle and you can drag it to the right or left to adjust the width. So I'm keeping the width in something like this. And now from the right side, actually, I want to use this right side as the sidebar. So first of all, let's just right click on this blue pencil icon here and delete it. Now we can see the empty space on the right side. This time click on this plus icon. And here from these widgets, I'm searching for sidebar. And I will be using this pencil sidebar. So just drag this pencil sidebar to this right empty space here. And we can see our main sidebar on the right side instantly. How cool is that? By the way, if you want to use any other sidebar instead of the main sidebar, you can change that from here. So if you have any other sidebar, you can select that from this place. Now these two looks more busier. So I just want to add some space at the left side of this sidebar. So to do it, make sure you have selected this sidebar widget. Go under its advanced tab. Now unlink the margin only at the left side. I'm adding 30 pixel of space. Cool. All right. Now underneath this running category posts, I want to display more posts that's from under a different category. So to do it, first of all, actually, I want to add some space at the bottom of this widget. So let's just select this category widget by clicking on this blue pencil icon, go under its advanced tab. And from here, unlink the margin. Now only at the bottom, I'm adding 60 pixel of margin like this. So here is some decent space. Okay. Now all we can do, we can just duplicate this widget. Now right click here on this blue icon and click on duplicate. So here, this running category posts are duplicated at the bottom here. 
Now here instead of running, I wanna display all the posts that's from nutrition category. So let's just close the running category from here and let's select nutrition from here. You see right now all the posts are from the nutrition category. Also we need to change this title. So from left let's just scroll down, open the heading title. Here instead of running, I'm writing here nutrition. Let's do the same thing. I just want to duplicate it one more time. So right click here and duplicate. Let's scroll down here instead of nutrition. Let's just close the nutrition. I'm selecting the category gym. So here all the blog posts are coming from under gym category. Let's now scroll down because I want to change the heading title to gym. All right. Now underneath these gym category posts, I want to add here another widget. So let's click on this Rubik's Cube icon. From here, I'm searching for latest posts. So here we go. It says fancy latest posts. Let's now just drag this widget underneath here. So my goal is to display here all the latest blog posts here without separating them by their categories. So here, all the latest blog posts will be shown. Okay, so before doing the query settings, I just wanna make sure its style is looking good. So instead of this grid posts, let's select another style. So from here, I'm selecting this one grid to columns posts. To me, it looks much better. All right, but instead of it to be centered aligned, we can make it left aligned. Now from here, post header alignment, I'm making it to left. It looks much decent. All right, let's now open the query option from here. And you know, I don't wanna show here any specific category. So all the recent blog posts will be shown here. That's why I'm keeping empty all the categories, all the tags. Let's now scroll down here by default posts per page is set to six, but I want to display here only four recent blog posts. Now at the right side here, one, two, three, four. Yep. I just want to display four blog posts here. Now from left, let's scroll down and open the heading title. I wanted to say latest news. So here at the top, it says latest news. And now from left, if you want to customize it more for that reason, you can open this option. It says other layout options. Now from here, you know, you can enable or disable all these options. Actually, you have all the controls on your hand. Like here, it says hide share box. Actually, within these posts, I don't like these social sharing options. So from here, I'm just turning off the share box. By the way, also, if you want to turn off these categories, you can do that from here. Also, you can hide the post author name from here. But you know what? I want to enable the post author and the category here. So let's now minimize this option. And here, if we have a look at the bottom, we can see the default navigation. But to me, we can make it much better. So to do it, let's open the layout. And from here, it says page navigation style is set to page navigation number. But instead of that here, I'm selecting load more posts option. And here custom number posts for each time load more posts set to six. That means whenever anyone clicks on this load more posts, the six other blog posts will be appeared. So that's okay for me. And to me, within this shortest time, I believe we have already created a very decent looking blog posts homepage. Now I just want to make sure it's also looking great on tablet and mobile device. So to check its responsiveness, let's now go to the bottom left, click on this responsive mode icon. So you know, on the desktop, it's looking great. Now click on this tablet icon. I think on the tablet device, we need to adjust a little bit. So just scroll up. The carousel is looking great. But underneath that, here, if we just make these columns width to 100%, it would do the great job. So from here, let's select this column, go under its layout from here. Only for the tablet device here, you can see a little tiny tablet icon. That means it will only be applied on tablet. From here, I'm setting its width to 100%. So right now you see it's looking great on tablet device. Let's now scroll down. 
scroll down more also i want to set its height not height its width to 100 percent so let's select this column from under its layout let's set the column width to 100 percent so right now everything is looking great on tablet device lastly let's now click on this mobile icon so on the mobile device everything is looking great i'm really happy with all the devices look so just click on this top right x to exit from the responsive mode and you know when you are happy just don't forget to click on this green update button to save your work by the way if you now want to have a real look of our home page just go to the browser and here you see it says our elementor.com if we now refresh our main url here we can see the beautiful home page everything is looking great everything is looking decent and neat and clean now have a look if we click on this load more posts here one two three four five six more posts has been loaded cool i'm really happy with this home page we can now move to the next part of the tutorial that's customizing our header and footer now to create or customize our header go to wordpress dashboard from the left menu items i'm searching for header builder here you go it says header builder click on header builder at this moment we have no header created that's why i'm clicking on add new let's name it anything okay i'm naming it jf header so first of all i just want to publish it from right side click on publish and then from these templates you can import any of them like let's have a look this one looks great also there are a lot of options and not only these options if you want you can start creating your header from scratch but i think all these are good we can just pick one and customize it and i believe the first one was really great so let's import this one the header one i'm clicking on import browser pop-up says i'm sure or not yes i'm sure click on ok so it's imported successfully only to check it or make double sure i'm clicking on update to save the change now the header one has been imported now i wanna customize it so to customize the header one let's click on edit with pnc header builder i'm clicking here so right now we are inside the header builder we can preview the header here at the top i'm not sure if you understand it properly or not but here at the top this is the very first area of our header then this is the middle area and if we scroll down from here this is the last portion of the header actually it's super easy so let's now start from the top area now here at the very top left we can see the date the date is basically coming from here it says date time now you may remember a few minutes ago we have made our pages by using elementor page builder just by drag and drop this is also a tool here we can create anything just by drag and drop it's the soledad themes built-in header builder so here i'm just giving you an example if you want to insert any button within this area the top bar's left area then here we can see a button let's just drag this button here within this area now after the date here we can see the button text at this time if you want to adjust the button text or button style all you need to do just click over this button all the available option will be appeared on the left side here you can put any custom link you can change the button text you can change the link target or any other styling from here but you know what i don't want this button to here so i'm just deleting it also i don't want this menu to here so at the very top left the date looks fine i mean it's okay but now after the date here i wanna show the new sticker so here is the new sticker widget let's now drag it just after the date time here we can see right now it says top posts but instead of that what about if we write here trending so just click on new sticker all the options will be available on the left side here now instead of this top posts text i just wanna say it trending all right so the text has been applied here on the front end 
Now from left, we can filter them through the category or tags. So if we specify any particular category, only those categories posts will be appear here. So filter top bar by I'm selecting category. And then let's scroll down, not within this field because this field is for top posts. So let's scroll down here this one you see it says fill list categories for filter by category on top post so here you need to put the category name i just wanna appear here all the blog posts that's under running category that's why i'm uh, i'm writing running here and then if you wanna add more categories you just need to separate them by comma but i just wanna appear the running category posts so i'm removing the comma from here all right, actually the running category posts are coming here, but we cannot see it because the color is kind of dark and our background color is also dark. So to adjust it, let's now scroll down because I wanna also change the color of this trending button. Now from here, it says background color for top posts text. Let's select it and I wanna select a red like color. So from here, it's not actual red. Let's make it pure red color. And then here it says color for post titles. I just want to make it pure white. So we can see the post titles here. Cool. And then on the right side, I'm saying it's right side because we can see these widgets on the right side of the top bar. And you know what? I personally don't like this login or register option because when you are logged in within the WordPress dashboard at the top right corner, we can always see that option. So let's not do the same thing double time. So I'm just deleting this login or register option from here. The social options at the right corner is fine. So let's keep it like this. And you know what? This top bar section looks kind of busy. Uh, if I able to add some space at the top and bottom, that would be great. So let's have a look. Yep, we can select the top bar from here. I'm selecting the top bar. Now here, I'm searching for the options. If there's any, yep, there's the padding options. So at the top and bottom, I'm adding 10 pixels of padding instead of five. Now it looks much cleaner. All right, let's now work with the middle bar. By the way, if you want this bar at the top, you can just drag it like this. You can drag it to the top. You see, now it goes to the top and the trending, this area comes to the second slot, but I don't want that. That's why I'm dragging this middle bar to the middle position. Now here from left, if you wanna change the logo, just click over this logo widget. Now here on the left, all the logo uploading options has appeared. So here if you want, you can put your own logo just by uploading from here. So everything is perfect for this moment. If you wanna upload your own logo, like I said, you can upload it from here. And they are all self-explanatory options. I think I don't describe them all. All right, let's now go to the right side. Here on the right side, this one is a custom HTML widget. So just click over it. Okay, so here you can put any of your affiliate links or Google Ads sometime provide the HTML snippet. You can just paste that snippet here. So the ads will be appeared on the right side in this place. And I have a dedicated area about ads on this tutorial. So let's keep the best for the last. All right, now underneath this mid section, let's now scroll down. Here is the bottom area. At the right side, we can see the search bar that's basically coming from here. So of course, I wanna keep a search bar on this right side, but on the left side, we have not created any menu at this point, but only to give you an example, let's just select this menu. And of course, we will be creating a menu, mega menus very shortly. At this moment, I'm just giving you an example. So let's select the menu and you can select the specific menu from this place just select this scroll bar i mean just select this drop down and from here you can select any of your available menu only for the moment i'm selecting menu one so here menu one has appeared cool now i want to show you another thing this is our normal header and if we now go to this option it says sticky header 
basically this one is the header that will be sticky while we are scrolling the page like this is our normal header but when we scroll down you see here another header is appearing this is basically the sticky header so on the sticky header i just wanna keep the logo on the left and on the right side i just wanna keep the navigation i don't want this search bar on the sticky header so first of all i'm just deleting this search icon from right side and the logo on the left is fine but i'm here just moving the menu to the right side here so this sticky header looks much better and it makes more sense so our header is looking great for the desktop device and of course i wanna always check how it's looking on tablet or phone so from here let's click on tablet or phone so here on the left side the mobile menu icon it's okay on the middle is the mobile logo that's perfect and on the right side the search bar it looks awesome and then if you want to have a look i mean if you want to set up the mobile sidebar so just select the mobile sidebar and to preview it from here click on this hamburger icon so only to give you an example if you want to put a different logo on your mobile device you can put the logo from this place so just click on this sidebar logo here you can upload a completely different logo only for mobile device then right after that is the social icon so all the social icons are showing here then here's the search option and here we can see a menu but i want to keep the same menu for the desktop and mobile device but here i'm showing this option only to show you if you want to apply a different menu on the mobile device you can do that from here but i want to keep the same menu for the mobile device and tablet so from here i'm selecting mobile device so for the mobile device from the select menu here i'm selecting the same menu that's menu one all right let's now close the sidebar menu and we can go back to desktop i believe we have done all the settings that we need to do with the header so just click on this save header and click on this x to exit from the theme customizer let's click on ok all right if we now go to the front end and refresh the page we can still see the previous header why is that because we need to set the global header from the theme customizer to do it from the top of this page click on this customize button now from the left links click on logo and header from here click on header builder then from here it says general header builder for all pages so i'm selecting the jf header that we have just created by using the header builder and whoa we can see our beautiful header at the top so you already understand in the same way if you want you can create multiple headers and you can select the headers for the different purpose i mean if you want you can create a completely different header and you can set that only for the home page similar like that if you want you can create a different header and you can apply that header only for the category tag and search pages but you know what i'm happy with this global header i wanna put this header over the website so i'm happy with it from top click on this publish button to save our work then click on this x to exit from the theme customizer let's now move to the next portion of this tutorial that's customizing the footer so at this moment if we scroll down and go to the very bottom here we can see our current footer so if you want to customize this footer again we need to go back to our theme customizer and you know you can always go to the theme customizer from the wordpress dashboard or from the top so from here i'm clicking on customize so we are inside the theme customizer let's just scroll down to the very bottom of this page so we can see the footer properly okay so first i want to make you understand from where these things are coming basically so these are coming from the widgets from left if i scroll down and go inside the widgets you see the footer is basically divided by these three columns so this is the left column this is the middle column and this is the right column all these three are coming from these three options this one says footer column one that's basically this one this one is footer column two and this one is footer column three 
they are coming accordingly here so let's now start working with the footer column one right now it's the fitness one so from here open the footer column one like our sidebar it's also created using the blocks so first of all actually i just want to delete it so i can show you how to do it from scratch so just click on this vertical three dots then click on remove legacy widget by the way not only a single block or single widget you can add here as many as block you want to be appeared on your footer so here on the left first click on this plus icon to add a new block here i'm searching for the sole dad one I mean I'm searching for the solid that recent posts so let's select it now here I just want to display the blog posts that's under nutrition category so from here I'm selecting the nutrition category and also at the title instead of recent posts I want to say it nutrition and then to make it look better let's just scroll down instead of one we can make the design in two column so from here i'm searching for that option let's now scroll down yep it says display on two columns yep let's turn it on and here instead of five i want to display only four posts so let's scroll up it says number of posts to show i'm setting it to four now it looks great in my opinion also right after this if you want to add more blocks just scroll down then click on this plus icon and you know you can add as many as block you want but i'm happy with it so click on this publish button to save it now from top let's go back now go inside footer column 2 so similar like the left one if you want to delete it you can delete this but you know what i just want to keep these recent posts because that makes complete sense so let's just keep it like this and go back and go inside footer column three and like i said if you want you can keep it if you want to add more blocks right after this just click on this plus icon and add them but for the moment i'm really happy with it so just go back go back one more time here i want to show you some more options what you can do with your footer so from left here let's click on footer go inside the general options at the bottom here we can see all the social media icons so let's scroll down yep here is the option for disabling it it says disable footer social icons let's just disable it if you don't want to show all the social media links here but I think the previous one was good so let's just keep the social icons and then at the very bottom here is some copyright text so if you want to change the text let's just scroll down these text are basically coming from this one it says footer copyright text so instead of 2019 here I wanted to say 2022 all right reserved designed and developed by instead of pencil design here I wanted to say Jim Fahad Digital and within this href let's just start typing after this HTTPS so here I'm putting my website URL that's Jim Fahad Digital dot com because I have made the website from scratch so of course I want to take all the credit and then if you scroll down here you can see here is also another ad slot so if you run google ads or any other affiliate link if you want to put you can put that here and like i said i will talk about all the ads at the very last part of this tutorial for now just click on this publish button to save your work all right and again click on this x to exit from the theme customizer so far we're doing great let's now move to the next part of the tutorial how to create menu and mega menus so to create a menu from scratch let's now go to wordpress dashboard now from left menus just hover over on appearance and go to menus here i want to create a menu from scratch so to create a new menu from here click on create a new menu now here you can give this menu a name because no one can see it so i just wanna name it jf menu and i wanna set it as our primary menu 
then click on create menu so i have created my jf menu now let's add some menu item within this menu so let's now have a look on the left side i'm just scrolling up so you can see it properly first of all let's just minimize it you can add any pages within the menu you can add any posts any custom link or any category i'm giving you all examples so first of all let's open the pages now click on view all here let's add our beautiful home page so i'm selecting our awesome home page click on add to menu you see on the right side our awesome home page has been added but the label i should change the label because awesome home page is too long text so from here just click on this down chevron icon here the label i just want it to say home all right let's now minimize it then i want to insert some categories so minimize the pages and open the categories now from the categories i'm selecting nutrition running gym yoga and click on add to menu so all of these categories will be added here all together all right and now i also want to show you how you can insert any custom link within the menu so to do it open the custom links from here within the url you need to put the url where you want to redirect your user so here i'm typing my website url that's https colon forward slash forward slash gym digital.com and the label should be contact so if anyone clicks on the contact menu that will redirect them to my website that's gym digital.com so click on add to menu all right so here we can see all the menu items if you wanna order or reorder them you can just drag this at the top of any other item like this but i wanna put the contact at the last here okay for the moment just save this menu by clicking here on the save menu button here and now if we go to the front end of our website and refresh the page you see we cannot see the menu that we have just created why is that because we need to call that menu within our header builder so to do it let's just go back to our wordpress dashboard from the left links open the header builder this one is our header builder it says jf header click on edit now click on edit with fancy header builder all right let's now scroll down at the very top so this menu this is basically the menu one but here i want to replace this menu one with jf menu so let's select on this one menu one now from these options from this drop down i'm selecting the jf menu that we have just created yep here we go we can now see our jf menu and i just wanna make sure it's applied on other places like on the sticky header and the mobile header so from here let's select the sticky header if we just scroll down here on the right side to just make double sure i'm clicking over this menu one and from left make sure it's set to jf menu also for the tablet or phone go to mobile sidebar okay from here open the hamburger so this one is the previous one so instead of that let's select the mobile sidebar menu select this one so here instead of menu one i'm selecting jf menu now click on this save header button to save our work and click on this x to exit yep click on ok so if we now go to the front end of our website and refresh the page we can see the jf menu at the top cool all right let's now go inside wordpress dashboard then hover over on appearance and go to menus so now you know how to create a menu from scratch how to insert any pages within the menu how to insert any category or custom link within the menu now i want to show you how to create mega menus and there are basically two methods to create a mega menu now first of all okay just open this nutrition option i'm opening this one the first mega menu creation option i will be showing that's for any type of menu item so no matter if it's a category menu item or any custom menu item that will be applicable for any type of item 
and then I will show you another method that's method 2 that will be only applicable for the category type menu item. So let's start with the first one. Here under this nutrition item, I want to create a mega menu. So for that reason, from here you see it says mega menu type. So from here, if we select the mega menu builder, then here another field will appear. It says select fancy block. So from here, you need to select a block. But so far, we haven't created any block on our website. So in order to create a mega menu, first we need to create a block. Alright, so create the block first, then we will come back to this place again. To create the block, from left side here it says fancy blocks. From here, let's click on add new. Yep, I wanna leave because I don't wanna keep this settings, so just click on leave. So this block's name, I just wanna name it nutrition mega menu. Now click on publish, publish one more time. And then I want to create this block using Elementor page builder. So click on edit with Elementor. And here within this builder, you can create anything you want. Basically, whatever you will be creating within this block that will be shown under the nutrition category as the mega menu. So here, instead of anything random, I want to make it, I mean, I want to do something that makes sense. So basically here, I just want to create a section that will pull down all the categories, I mean all the nutrition categories posts. So first of all, here I'm dragging fancy featured slider here. And then, you know, I just want to display all the posts that's under nutrition category. So from here include category, I'm selecting nutrition. And then, like I said, I personally don't like the auto sliding. So let's just scroll down, open the slider options. From here, I'm turning off the auto play. Now, let's open the layout here instead of style 1. Let's select any other one. Let's select style 11. This one looks good, but instead of style 11, I'm selecting style 17. Yep, this one looks much better. So to save it, just click on this green update button and just click on this hamburger icon and click on exit to dashboard. So we have created our first block and this block says nutrition mega menu. Now we can go back to our menus. So from here appearance to menus. Now here is our menu builder. Open the nutrition this time. Let's set the mega menu type to mega menu builder and here select fancy block. You know, we have just created this block. It says nutrition mega menu. So select it. Then from here, we can keep the mega menu position to flexible. Just click on save menu. And now if we go to the front end of our website and refresh the page. All right. If we now hover over on nutrition, it's loading. And here we can see the mega menu. Okay, let's hover over on it again. We can see the mega menu. It's looking really great. All right, let's now create our mega menu by using method two. So just go to WordPress dashboard. I wanna create another mega menu that will be go under the running item. So just open the running item. And like I said before, this method two will be only applicable if you want to create any mega menu under any category item. So from here, let's just select this option. It says not mega menu, open it. And here I want to display all the posts that's under running category. So from here, I'm selecting running category. Now from here, you can select two rows, three rows or one rows. I just want to keep one row. So click on save menu. Now go to the front end of our website and if we refresh it now. So here, if we hover over on nutrition, it's loading. We can see the block mega menu that we have created earlier. And from here, if we hover over on the running, we can see all the category mega menus here. Cool. So we are almost done with the creation of our beautiful blog. Now I just want to show you some other adjustments. So first of all, I want to show you a legal adjustments. That's the GDPR compatibility. To make our blog website completely GDPR compatible, 
let's just go to the theme customizer from top i'm clicking on customize so right now we are inside the theme customizer from here click on general then click on gdpr policy as in the last part of this tutorial we will be adding some google snippet to run ads on our website basically we need to install some other plugins so in short our website will collect some data of our users and this gdpr compatibility means the users should know we are collecting their cookies or their datas from their browser so to enable that cookie pop-up just select this option just turn it on also let's turn on this option now here at the bottom we can see the pop-up it says this website uses cookies to improve your experience we will assume you are okay with this but you can't opt out if you wish then here is a accept button by the way if you want to change this text you can change this from within this field also instead of accept if you want to write any other text you can write that from here and then also on that read more button if you want to link that read more button to any other your legal pages like terms of service or disclaimer pages you can do that from here so now to save our work just click on this publish button then from top let's go back also go back one more time so basically we are done with our block creation also with all the legal terms now we are ready to roll and all other options are optional if you have more time i mean if we have lizard time you can always play around all these options but like i said all these are optional so if you have enough time you can just play around with all these options you can enable any option to test it out you can disable that later so here i just wanna show you last few things if we go inside general from here if you want you can change your typography and colors so first of all let's go inside typography now you will understand it properly if we go inside a single blog post page so i'm going inside this 10 tips for successful weight loss blog page so we are here and okay first click on accept because i won't mind if you accept i mean i won't mind if you take all the cookies information from my browser all right so first of all i just want to change all the heading fonts from my blog website like here this heading and this heading all other heading will be changed if i change the font from a single place so we can do it from here it says fonts for heading titles i want to change it to poppins font so from here i'm searching for poppins here we go let's select poppins and have a look at the right side here the heading font has been changed to poppins instantly and similar like the headings i also want to change the body text body text really refers to these texts so from here instead of lato I just wanna change it to poppins as well so from here i'm searching for poppins here you go let's select poppins and have a look on these texts you see all the body text is now in poppins font cool so our whole website is now looking more customized all right let's now go back because now i just wanna show you one last thing that i wanted to show you that's how to change all these social media links and like i said these social media links are global if you change the social media links from a single place that will be changed from throughout the website so to change it from this left menus here i'm searching for social media here we go just open it and here you can see a huge list of all social media handles so if you don't want to put your social media accounts like for example if you don't want to put your soundcloud account just put it empty then if you want to use your snapchat put your snapchat link within this field but also i don't want to keep the snapchat let's now scroll down i also don't want to use the rss link so i'm keeping it empty let's just scroll to the very top i also don't want to keep the pinterest so i'm keeping it empty whenever i'm making any social icons to empty you see that's also removing from the top right corner 
Now we only have the Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn and YouTube icon. And of course you don't wanna keep only hash here, instead of this hash put your real Facebook page URL, instead of this hash put your Twitter handle, here your Instagram handle and your LinkedIn profile link here. So these will be applied on this top right header here, also if we go to the very bottom of our page here on the footer also it will be applied. Alright, so when you are happy with it, just click on this publish button to save your work and then click on this X to exit from the theme customizer. Let's now move to the next part of the tutorial that's website optimization. In this part we will talk about Google Analytics, Google Search Console and search engine optimization. So in order to optimize our website, first I want to install a free plugin. So to install that plugin, let's go to the dashboard of our WordPress website. Now from left, let's go to plugins to add new. And here we will be installing a SEO plugin. So here I'm searching for rank math. Here you go. It says rank math SEO. So just click on install now, then click on activate. So it says connect free account, so click on connect your account. Like I said, it's completely free, so if you don't have a rank math account, you can just click here on register now and create your free account. But I already have a free account, so I'm clicking here on use email and password. So here I'm putting my email address. Alright, let's now click on login. Let's now close the pop-up. So here click on OK, activate now. As we are just starting out, so click on easy, then from here click on start wizard. So only to give you an example, if you previously have used Yoast SEO, you can import all the data from there, but I don't want that so I'm deselecting it. Or we can just click here on skip don't import now. So here it's asking for some of our information. So JF Fitness is a, if it's a personal blog, you need to check this one. Other options here are personal portfolio, web shop, small business like this. I'm selecting personal blog. Now here I will upload an image. Actually when you are on mobile, you can see there are logo on the search. So that will basically come from this place. So here I'm uploading an image, click on add or upload file go to upload files let's select files i'm selecting this logo click on open now click on use this file and then here we need to add another image that will appear by default on social media shares and they recommend the image size to be 1200 by 630 so here i'm uploading that image as well go to upload files select files i'm selecting this image click on open by the way, these are not mandatory, but these are good. So if you don't have these images ready at this point, don't worry about it too much. Now here, click on use this file. All right, so we have uploaded the logo. We have uploaded the image for social sharing. Let's now click here on save and continue. So here it's asking for connecting with Google services, but before clicking here, I just wanna index our website on Google search console. That's basically let Google know that our website is alive. So to do it, I'm just going to Google search. And here I'm searching for Google search console. Now hit enter. Okay, just click on the first link. Now from here, click on start now. And here we need to index our website. By the way, if you don't see this type of UI, you can always just click on this hamburger icon. From there, click on search property. You can just click here on add property. Then you can see and prototype like this. Okay, so within the URL prefix, I wanna insert our website URL. And you know, our website URL is our elementor.com. So I'm just copying the URL, go inside the search console. I'm selecting this option and here within the URL, I'm pasting our website. I mean our website name. Okay, now click on continue. It's checking. So here I'm just waiting. So to verify this is our website, it's providing us some HTML file. But for now, I just want to keep it like this because I want the rank math to do this stuff. So for now, I'm just clicking on done. Now go back to the setup wizard of the rank math. Now click on connect Google services. 
now choose the google account you want to use for this one and here i'm um, allowing all of these options so let's check all of this now scroll down and click on continue so here is the list for connecting with google services like search console here is the analytics and here is the adsense for now let's just make sure the search console this site is selected to our elementor.com and of course it should be your website name then scroll down and for now just click on save and continue also the final wizard page click on return to dashboard so again to check it our website is indexed on search console or not we can just go back to google search console then if we refresh the page then click on this hamburger icon from the search property let's select our website that's our elementor.com so we have successfully verified our ownership it says welcome to search console so let's click on start to just make you double sure from left if we click on settings all right let's close all these notifications here at the top you see it says ownership verification you see it says you are a verified owner so our website is now verified to google by the way if for some reason if your website is not verified instantly like this then there is another way that's manual so to do it you can just go to rank math dashboard again now from here from the rank math go to its sub menus to the general settings now from left select the analytics you see here on the search console we can see the green light that means it's activated or our ownership is verified but i'm just showing you if you cannot see this green icon then you can just go to webmaster tools and here it says google search console code so you need to embed the meta tag within this field and to get that meta tag you can just click here on this link it says search console verification page so i'm clicking here okay so from here just copy this meta tag from here go inside wordpress dashboard i mean here then paste the meta tag in this place now scroll down click on save changes now go back to the webmaster page here and then click on this verify button so it says great job your website our elementor.com is now verified awesome okay let's now close it let's now move to the next part how to set up google analytics we will be using google analytics to measure how much traffic we are getting on our website all the data about our visitors like their countries they are all the demographics their age their gender all information about our visitors so to get google analytics of course for sure first thing we need to do we need to create a google analytics account so just go to google search again and here i'm searching for google analytics just type google analytics and here the first link analytics.google.com just click here it says welcome to google analytics all right click on start measuring here you need to put your google account name i mean analytics account name so here i'm just writing jim fahad digital you will of course need to write your name here now let's scroll down and from here click on next okay so here you need to put your property name that you want to use on a particular website so i'm using this to use on our fitness blog that's why here i'm giving its property name jf fitness then in what time zone you want to get that report so if you want you can select this time zone from here but i just want to keep it like this then from here open the show advanced options so here i'm just turning on this option create a universal analytics property just turn it on now here within the website url we need to put our website name and make sure your website is selected to https here i'm writing www.ourelementor.com of course you should write your website name here now scroll down and click on next now it's asking for some more information about your business so from here industry category i'm just selecting beauty and fitness as our blog website is a fitness blog then here it's a small business and you can select all these options that's suitable for you so i'm turning on this option increase my conversions 
you know all these are optional so i'm just selecting some of them and click on create so here in this pop-up you're just agreeing with their terms of service so from here i'm clicking i mean i'm checking on this here and click on i accept all right so here on this pop-up we can see all the information but we don't need to do anything here just go back to our wordpress dashboard from the dashboard make sure you are on the rank math here or just from the rank math click on general settings click on analytics then underneath the search console here is the option for analytics now here have a look the account here i will be selecting the account that we have just created so that's jim fahad digital then here's the property that's j fitness we have only created one property so i'm selecting this one by the way if you want you can create multiple properties for your different websites and here view i want to show all the data so i'm selecting all website data now we can just scroll down and click on save changes if we now scroll down yep right now you see the green icon with this analytics as well so right now if any visitors come to our website google analytics will keep track about all their informations like from which country they are coming their age their interest about everything all right let's now move to the next part of our tutorial that's how to make money from your blog actually there are so many different ways in terms of making money from your blog website like if you want you can earn from google ads or any other ad platforms you can sell your courses from your blog website you can do affiliate marketing you can name it right and here i will be showing you some of the ways so let's first start with the google adsense and here again if you want to earn from google adsense the very first thing you need to do you need to create a google adsense account so again i'm just going to google search and here i'm searching for google adsense so here the first link adsense i'm clicking here now from here click on get started now choose your google account okay so first here we need to write our website name so our website name is ourelementor.com just copy the name and here i'm pasting our website name now here it says get more out of adsense so i'm selecting the first option it says yes send me customized help and performance suggestions now here your payment country or territory so from here make sure you are providing your exact country because on your exact location a physical card will be provided where you will have the pin code to activate your google account to receive the adsense money okay so from here right now i'm in bangladesh so i'm selecting bangladesh let's now scroll down from here i'm checking i have read and accept the agreement click on start using adsense cool we have created the google adsense account now we need to customize it so here the first thing it says tell us about you so here click on enter information now here you know better about yourself so if you're individual select individual if you are a business select the business so i'm individual so here i'm selecting individual and here i'm just filling up all these informations very quickly and then click on submit now here just push your phone number so here i'm adding my phone number I'm selecting text message and send all right so I have just received the verification code so click on submit all right so our all information is now verified then from the right side here it says connect your site to AdSense so just click on let's go now from here scroll down and click on request review now you have done all the work from your end and google will manually review your website and usually it takes 10 to 15 days to get approval from google but remember before sending google adsense approval request make sure you have created your whole website exactly the way i have shown in this tutorial because if you have created a random website if you don't optimize your website properly google may not accept your google adsense request so just make sure you have done everything exactly the way I have shown in this tutorial.
and when you are finally accepted of course you will get that on your email then just go back to google adsense on this dashboard then from left go to ads so here go to next next and click on get started okay so from this place you can create all your google ads first of all go to buy ad unit so for example if you want you can create all these types of ads like display ads in feed ads in article ads multiplex ads i'm showing you how to create a display ad so just click on display ads and basically you can create three types of ads one is square another one is horizontal and another one is vertical because let's say if you wanna put this ad on the sidebar on that case the vertical type i mean the vertical type is the best then let's say if you wanna put the ad on your header or footer then this horizontal ad is perfect and this square ad you can put it on the sidebar or the in between ads so first of all i want to create a square ad so here i'm naming it jfsq ad that means square ads click on create basically this is the code snippet this code snippet you need to use inside of your blog website i'm showing you that very shortly but for now click on done because i want to create more ads and you see the ad we have just created we can see that here at the bottom it says jfsq ads then i want to create another display ad so let's select this one go to here select the horizontal one and i want to name it jf horizontal so i'm just writing here hz click on create now let's click on done also i want to create another one so from here select the vertical one and i'm naming it vr that refers to vertical and click on create and again click on done so here at the bottom of this page we can see the three ads one is vertical another one is horizontal and another one is square ad i'm showing you shortly how to use these ads throughout your website on different places like on your sidebar header footer and all other places so in this part i will show you how to insert google ads within your blog now i'm going back to our blog website right now we can see the front end of our website so first of all i want to go to the theme customizer so from top click on customize then here first of all only to give you an example let's say i wanna put some ad on the right sidebar from google then how to do that okay so to do it we need to go to the sidebar so from left let's scroll down go inside widgets because you may remember we have customized our sidebar from here so now go inside main sidebar so here we can see the complete sidebar here and this is the right sidebar on this place i wanna place that ad underneath here so from left from the blocks here i wanna create another new block so click on this plus icon first of all i wanna take a soledad heading so here i'm searching for soledad heading here you go soledad block heading and first of all i want it to say recommended so here i'm typing recommended now underneath that click on this plus icon and here i'm searching for html widget so here is the one custom html select it okay now within this html field we need to paste that google adsense code now go back to google adsense as this is our sidebar ad that's why i wanna insert here a vertical ad so just go to google adsense and here you remember we have created the vertical ads i named it jfvr vr refers for vertical so from here just click on this get code icon now to copy this code i mean to copy this ad code just click on copy code snippet go inside the theme customizer then paste the code inside html field so here after pasting the google ads code still we cannot see the ads on the right side because when your adsense account will get verified from google like i said it would take 10 to 15 days then google ads will start showing here on this place so basically after getting your google adsense approval on the right side you can see google ads like this 
All right, let's now scroll down from left. To save this work, click on this publish button. Now, Google Ads on the sidebar, this is just one placement. You can put Google Ads on different places. Like if you want, you can put the Google Ads on the header. You can add the Google Ad on the footer. Then in between ads, I'm showing you some other example. Let's say if you wanna insert Google Ads at the top of your footer, then just go back from the theme customizer again go back now from here go inside footer go to general now here you see it says add google adsense or custom html code above footer so whatever google adsense code you will put that will appear at this place at the top of the footer and you know if we put here the vertical type add then our design would look messy so on that case we will be using vertical add snippet here now just go to google adsense again let's now click on done and here i wanna select the horizontal add from here click on this get code let's now copy the code snippet go inside customizer and here i'm pasting the google ad code and yep we can see the ad here in this place by the way if your google adsense account is not approved yet you cannot see the ads at this moment all right let's now go back because i want to show you some other options let's now go back again and here let's say i want to show some ads inside of a single blog post page so for that reason i'm first clicking on this blog post so to insert the html code or the google ads code from left here first i'm searching for the single posts so here it is go inside single posts click on general now i'm scrolling down to the very bottom of these options okay so here this one is for the below post description so it will appear here and this one it says end of content posts so this ad snippet will go to the at the very bottom of this post here okay so i'm showing you step by step let's say if you want to display any ad or show any ad here in this place you need to add that snippet within this field so again go to google adsense let's now close it and you see within this space the horizontal ad would look better so from here i'm selecting the horizontal ads select this get code icon now from here click on copy code snippet go inside customizer and let's paste the code here let's just wait to propagate and we can see the ad at the top and also i wanna paste the same snippet here because i wanna display the same horizontal ad at the bottom of this post so let's paste it here as well end of content posts let's now scroll down to the very bottom of this blog post so here yep at the very bottom of this blog post we can see the ad and by the way about all this ads design you have no control because google will place here random ads you will have no control over that all right so you already understand in this way you can put your google ad on the sidebar on the footer top also there is another option to place the ad on the footer bottom if you want you can do that then within the post i mean after the post also if you want you can put in between ads then here at the top of the blog post here also let's say if you want to put google ads inside the header then you know you just need to go inside your header builder then within that html code snippet just paste the google adsense code and always just remember one thing whenever you are placing any ads make sure that doesn't break your website design that means if you want to put any ad on the sidebar you need to put the code for the vertical google ads if you want to place any ads to the header of your website of course you should put here a horizontal ad layout so when you are done with placing all your google ads just click on this publish button to save all work then close this x to exit from the theme customizer 
Let's now move to the next part, how to earn through affiliate marketing from your blog. So first of all, basically what is affiliate marketing? You will promote other people's product on your blog. Then when anyone buys that product, you will get commission from that sale. Simple concept, no rocket science. Okay, now why to get the products that you wanna promote? There are so many different marketplaces, I'm showing you some. One of them is AppSumo.com. If you wanna promote digital assets or softwares, then AppSumo is one of the greatest marketplace. And then another marketplace is ShareASale.com. Then you can promote products from CJ.com. Also, another popular marketplace is clickbank.com. Now, you can pick any product from these marketplaces and promote that product on your blog. I'm taking clickbank.com as an example. So, to promote their product, first of all, you need to create a free account here. You know how to create a free account. Just click on start here and create your free account. I already have a clickbank account. So, I'm going inside my dashboard and here from the dashboard you can see there are so many categories so here for example if i open e-business and marketing you can see there are different categories like affiliate marketing e-commerce operations market research all this then here if i open the cooking food and wine you see there are so many subcategories like recipes special diet vegetable wine making okay as we have created our blog that's related to health and fitness that's why i want to promote a product that goes with our niche so for that reason i'm going inside health and fitness niche so from here just click on health and fitness to see all the products that's under health and fitness niche and here we can see all the commissions rates for example here the first one it says Exipure. its commission rate is 149 dollar per sale then here is another one it says java burn here is the tea burn most of them are basically fat loss supplements okay only to give you an example i'm selecting the first one it says Exipure. So, if I now want to promote this product on our blog, first of all, I want to go to their affiliate page. So, here it says affiliate page. I'm opening their affiliate pages link from a new tab. So, here in this page, I will get all the assets as an affiliate of this product. Like all the links, all the images. But from this page, I just want to take the image of the product. So, from top, click on images. So from here, I just want to pick one of the images to promote their product. For example, I'm taking this image. So just click on this image. Now right click here and save this image. Let's just save it. And now I want to use this image on the sidebar of our website. So let's just go to our blog. And here, let's go to customize. From top, I'm clicking on customize. Like I said, I want to add that image on the sidebar of our website. For example, let's say I just want to put that after this Facebook pages link. So let's first go to our sidebar from left here. I'm going inside widgets from there. Go inside main sidebar. Now after the Facebook page URL. So basically here, let's just create a new block so click on this plus icon first of all i want to create a heading so here i'm searching for soledad heading here we go i want it to say recommended and then right after this heading widget here let's click on this plus icon because i just want to insert an image click on image then click on upload i want to upload the image that we have just downloaded so let's select this image click on open all right so we have uploaded the image and on the sidebar here we can see this image but at this point this is an static image now here with this image i want to put my affiliate link and to get the affiliate link i'm again going inside clickbank here you see we are promoting this product it says Exipure, and here we can see big button says promote now click on promote now here this is my account name we need to create the affiliate link click here on generate hope links and it's generated my affiliate link now click here to copy the link all right it's copied on the clipboard just close it now go back to our wordpress dashboard and with this image i just want to link it so from here click on this insert link icon 
and I'm pasting my affiliate link here. Then click on return. Now just from top click on publish and then click on this X to exit from the theme customizer. Now have a look. We are now at our blog and at the right sidebar we can see this beautiful image. But when any visitor clicks over this image, let's click here. That will take us the affiliated page of this product. So now from this page, if any user clicks on order now, if they purchase the product for one single sale, I will get $149. So only for example, if I get only 5 sales per month, I can make more than $700 only from this single product. So following this same technique, you can promote other products on the sidebar or your header or your footer. Even if we go to any single blog post page, you can insert the images with your affiliate link even inside the blog posts. So now you know how to do it. Let's now move to the next portion of this tutorial that's how to market your blog. So yes, how to get traffic into your blog. Actually there are so many different ways. Okay, here let me tell you one thing first. If you want everything for free and that's completely okay and I would say it's possible but on that case you need to do all the work alone by yourself. Instead if you spend a little money you can grow your blog more faster you can start earning money from your blog more faster. I'm sharing different ways with you, so you can decide it by yourself. The first and most popular one is by ranking on Google and other search engines. If you are a good writer, you can do it by yourself. You start publishing minimum 8 to 10 blog posts per month. And yeah, of course with good keywords. Then you can see the results within few months. Or you can hire some writers to write and rank your blog post on behalf of you. So you know one of the best places to hire people is Fiverr.com and from here on the Fiverr I'm searching for writer. We can just write here blog writer. So you can just browse through here and Fiverr has added another great feature like they care about your budget like it says under 35. So if you want to spend less than $35 then you can just hire this person then you have got a budget like $35 to $60 then you can contact with her and if you have budget above $90 then you can contact her. So it's simple like that you can browse through all of them and you can go to their profile you can see some of their previous works and then you can decide it by yourself. So here like you see this service it says I will write your SEO blog post and her pricing is starting at $35. So these are pretty decent pricing because if we browse more like here you see she will write 5000 plus words on your blog post. Actually you should write minimum 1500 plus words to rank on Google. Alright then I wanna show you another place to hire better writer. That's iWriter.com. If we have a look on their pricing, here you can hire different level of writers like Standard, Premium, Elite and Elite Plus. So here you can see all their pricing. And like I said, if you want to rank on Google, you should write all the blog posts that should have minimum 1500 words. So you see you're getting all these professional writers in budget. All right. Then I want to show you another way to get more traffic on your blog. So basically how to drive traffic through Pinterest. You probably know a great number of bloggers bring their quality traffic from Pinterest. Personally I also love Pinterest. And actually I have learned most of the Pinterest techniques from this course. It's made by Alex and Laura. They made nearly million dollars per month from their blog. So if you want to drive traffic faster like 10,000 to 50,000 visitors from even your first few months then you can take this course. To take this course you can just go to jimfahaddigital.com forward slash cg pinterest. I'll also put that link in the description. And I also recommend there another course if you wanna become a master of SEO. To get this course you can just go to jimfahaddigital.com forward slash cg seo. I'll also put this course's link in the description. These guys really know their stuff. 
Now you know how to create a complete money making blog. So just go ahead and create your own blog. Please feel free to like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel to get more blogging related videos and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. And for any WordPress related professional help, you can contact me through my website that's jimfahaddigital.com. I will see you in the next video. For now, bye-bye.